Hello everyone and welcome to another little video on a plane, this time the T-38, the plane that astronauts train in and have done so for more than 50 years now, I think. Uh, we do have a little bit of an error, a JSI variable animator, I guess that has something to do with raster prop monitor, that's JSI usually, but I don't know how to fix that, so we're just going to have to deal with that message. I have the atmosphere autopilot fly-by-wire system engaged, and here we go. T-38 is a nifty little plane. You can see our vessel mass right now is 4.44 tons. We're not quite fully fueled. We're not quite as fueled as I could be. Though, how much of the maximum takeoff weight should be occupied by fuel? Oh, we got a little hop there. Oh, I really should be pulling up. And how much by other ordnance is... I don't think the T-38 carries something, uh, you know, a heavy load particularly. And oftentimes you'll see it with an external tank on its belly because it doesn't carry that much internal fuel. Well, I mean, a healthy amount, but not for extended range and all that. Right now with full thrust you can see that we have a 35 minute stage time, but uh, we are using our afterburners in this case. I thought about making a T-38 shuttle. And so instead of having the usual wing pieces and tanks on here, I have super shielded ones, though really the the plane would be significantly heavier if they were super shield ones, but basically I've got X-15 equivalent uh, parts on this current plane. I'm wondering if I can make a shuttle out of it. Now, this is not the craziest idea ever. Uh, you have to consider that there was a proposed variant of the X-15 with rocket engines. They never used it, but it was a space trainer. It was uh, designated N-205. And that was proposed in uh, 1958. Basically, it would have been, you know, an alternate to the X-15. It would be Northrop's X-15, whereas the X-15 was actually made by uh, North American. And so they wanted to uh, just strap some rocket engines on it and see if it could do the job. And uh, there was the N-205 original, which would have gotten to 61 kilometers altitude. And then N205B, which could get to 87 kilometers altitude. And uh, you could sort of see why the, X, uh, the T38 would be a good option for that. Its wing shape, it's a little bit longer than the X15 wings, but it's basically the same shape. The tailplane is also an all moving tailplane, just like the X15 has. And, uh, you know, it's got a streamlined body, very tight. And where the X15 would have sort of a. A bulge on the side of the body. It, it of course has the engine intakes and uh, well the engines themselves. The engines by the way are really cute little engines. They're producing 7.9 kilonewtons right now. These are the correct engines. The J85, the GE J85s. Very maneuverable. Difficult to target was one of its uh, big uh, plus sides as far as uh, using it as a trainer and often and the variant uh, F5s were actually used in combat but uh, the F5s were also used in adversarial roles as were the T38s in training so they would be the bad guys basically and they were very useful bad guys because they were so hard to target also uh, if a T-38 actually managed to, you know, mock kill the people that they were training with, or the F-5s more precisely, um, that that was quite an embarrassment for the for the fighter jockeys. You can see we're past Mach 1. Technically, the T-38 uh, had a top speed of Mach 1.3, and you can see it would have trouble going too much faster than that right now. The F-5 can get to Mach 1.6, I believe. But I'm not gonna leave it just at uh, flying this around uh, in this way. I will strap rocket engines to it, so we will do that. It was tough to decide what rocket engines to use, and we'll get to that. I'll just uh, talk about that during that flight, but I couldn't resist. Now, you'll note the girder segments in the wings. They're sort of hard to miss, and th that those are there because of the landing gear and the landing gears are, are also hard to miss too. Uh, I had a lot of rolling on the runway issues, you know how that is. 
so I needed to make sure that we kept the landing gear straight and this was the the best well I wouldn't say the best but this was the way I decided to do that I'm pulling a lot of G's here but we'll be pulling a lot of G's when we try and go to space we won't quite get to space the, if we do get uh, get to, well I mean it depends on what you define as space but uh, it would be what the Air Force defined as space but not what the what we normally think of as the 100 kilometer limit. The T-38 and the F-5 sort of bear a resemblance to the F-104 as well with their sleek shape, the shape of the wings. And the F-104 was also at one point uh, given a rocket engine. In fact, uh, that shows up in the right stuff. Uh, Chuck Yeager takes that variant out and that's the variant of the F-104 that uh, he famously crashed in, though obviously walked away from. In that case though, the F-104 kept its jet engine as well. I don't believe the T-38 would have been able to keep its jet engines and have a rocket engine. It's just too small for that. But I'm not sure. I mean, you never know. I don't have a schematic of this N-205 variant. Uh, come on, go down. Oh, no, the, the runway, ah. Uh, I should just never run, land on that runway. Not that I wasn't too fast, mind you, but I'm pretty sure it was that gap back there. Or whichever gap, uh, I think it was this gap, actually. Yeah. That's sad. Well, let's turn a rocket out of it and try and land at the shuttle landing facility instead. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad this time, and you'll note I've rotated it so that we're going to sort of launch uh, on our backs to the north, and that's because I would like to remain close to land so that they can sit down on land rather than ditching in the water or something. So, yeah, that's why we're oriented like this. You'll note the addition of RCS ports. They're using hydrazine, uh, so RCS ports here uh, at the wingtips for roll and uh, in the tail right here and our engines are vanguard engines I had to think about what engines would be most likely used in this situation probably they just design, you know design custom engines the X1 engine uh, is too small way too small uh, the X15 engine is way too big actually especially if they were got put three of them on here I've only put two vanguard engines but the X15 engine is like 200 kilonewton class the Vanguard engine is only 100 kilonewtons, so it's a little bit more restrained, but even then we'll have pretty high G-forces. And so, but they fit also, it's important. Uh, the X-15 engine just won't fit on the tail of this without significant redesign. Even so, the Vanguard engine sort of poking out. The ideal thing would be um, ground variants of the AJ-10 would be nice. Uh, especially if they were going to put three of them, but the nozzle of the AJ-10 is way too big if uh, we use the vacuum model of it. So I needed to find uh, a sea level model of the AJ-10, which isn't the easiest thing. Uh, that JSI message is fading out. Good. Uh, so basically, uh, we filled this area up with kerosene and liquid oxygen. I kept the intakes, but uh, basically any area that used to be used for the, I mean, just all of this is kerosene and liquid oxygen. There you are. Uh, here, we've put the hydrazine. And there's no fuel in the wings right now. Because pumping it uh, into the engines would be complicated. It, I mean, I guess it's possible, but because you've got a mix of fuels, easiest to just uh, put the two tanks. I mean, you can imagine uh, a kerosene tank and a liquid oxygen tank here and then the engine. And that's basically what I'm picturing. And yeah, uh, we are heavier, obviously, than our former air-breathing self. Uh, 11 tons here, and that's because of the fuel. But easily compensated for by the two engines. And of course, they have to produce more than a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1, and they're going to produce a thrust-to-weight ratio of 2, 2.3. But it tops out at 3.7, and there's 1 minute and 25 seconds of thrust. So, with all that noted, I'm going to use Atmosphere Autopilot still, and throttle up, of course. One ignition on this, 
Let's go. Ignition. And launch. The little RCS pods on the wingtip admittedly um, make it look a little bit odd, but I think it's probably for the best. The ones on the body just don't get, give enough roll authority, and that's sort of important on this sort of flight. I do want some horizontal speed, because otherwise it's going to be harder to um, recover. But, not too much horizontal speed, or we're going to end up too far away from the KSC to land back at it. And I would like to land back at the KSC. Probably the shuttle landing strip will be safer, judging from our last experience. We're past Mach 3. We have 10 seconds to go. So I'm going to roll over a little bit more. And shut down. Mach 3.9 was the peak there. And we have an apoapsis shy of the 100 kilometer mark, but uh, it was advertised to be able to go 87 kilometers, and it looks like we'll pass that. So, about the right area that we would like. Probably they wouldn't have been carrying the hydrazine, or at least not that much hydrazine. I'm carrying that much hydrazine for the possible shuttle variant of this. Though I don't know if all the parts are properly heat shielded for that, but. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. That'll be a later video. Okay, uh, we need to activate the RCS now and oh shut down the forward thrust and roll. Technically the vertical stabilizer of the T-38 has a little bit up here that obviously doesn't move. I mean, it's just a little bit more. Uh, but it was tough to make that shape correct because the increments for the control surfaces go by 0.04, whereas the increments for the procedural wing go by 0.125. And if you put a procedural wing up there, or you put a, well, ideally you want to put a procedural wing piece up there, it just can't cover the right amount, the right number, because there's not, I mean, uh, you could get close, but it just didn't look right at all. So. Maybe I was being too picky, but it didn't seem right to me, so I just left it off. Okay, you can see we're not that far away from the KSC, so my hope is... We don't have jet engines on here right now. My, my hope is that we can still get back by a good turn, but first we're going to face a lot of G-forces going down. I'm not exactly sure how they would have handled the descent on either the X-15 or this, but... The safest way I've found is just to go with the prograde vector and deal with the heat and g-forces. We're not going to have a whole lot of options as far as slowing down from this. Okay, I'm going to try and limit it to 6 g's. Uh, well, okay, 7. Okay, maybe more than 7. Okay, and then we turn. It's pretty clear that the T-38's um, speed limitations are not structural, they're due to the small engines that it normally carries. And, of course, uh, the F-5 improves on that. Northrop sure saw a lot in this design. After all, they made the F-5 out of it, and the F-20 was completely funded by Northrop in an effort to sell that one. Uh, the, normally they get defense contracts to design and build things, but they actually made the F-20 on their own dime. And the F-20 is just a single engine variant, a higher performance variant of this that's more updated. But ultimately that didn't pan out. The T-38's among the oldest still active planes in the US military. And the other ones that are comparable are like the B-52 obviously which is probably gonna be eternal and um, may maybe like a refueler 
like the KC-135 or something like that. Uh, probably C-130s. Well, I'd rather fly straight in than try and do a U-turn, so... Let's go down so that I can kill my velocity. But I gotta watch this, because I do want to get back. It glides pretty well, though. Probably a little bit too well. Air brakes. I don't actually know where the T-38's air brakes are. And I could probably use them. I'm sure they had them. Well, here we go. You definitely don't generally put the landing gear down at 460 knots. Basically, it was what I just did. But I don't have a whole lot of choice right now. Okay. I'm going to try using the flaps not to create lift, but to create drag. Uh, too much speed. Okay. Well, we have contact with the ground. We're slowing down. And we've stopped. Okay, well, safe landing on this runway anyway, and from a much more ambitious flight, I think. So, there you have it. Uh, the T-38 in in special style, if you will. Uh, there, there are possibilities with this, but I'll leave that be for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.